Who would have thought we'd be saying that Arsenal are the best defense in the league? Who would have actually thought we'd say that at some point in time? But Jurgen Klopp would be the happiest manager in the Premier League. There's not a lot of talk around Liverpool. They would love that. Nobody's Look talking about pressure. them at all. Are you a Man U fan? Really, Jimmy? Wow, <laughs> Jimmy. Every smart rich guy you know. He said United every fans. smart rich guy. <laughs>A very, 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 very good day to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mamas and papas. I am for Lajimulu Ashegun, James Akinjola, but you can simply call me Jimmy. I will be your host on the show today. This is Budweiser's Kings of Football show, coming to you live and direct all the way on Twitter, as well as right here on your YouTube channel. Now, of course, what we're doing today is looking through everything happening this weekend. Of course, all the hot topics that might have transpired during the week as it concerns the Premier League. I won't be doing this by myself as I do have a lot of kings on the show today. Um, one that is making a first time appearance in person. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me first of all introduce the king, my forever rival, my um, even by the jersey we're wearing today, you know that is rivalry. Ladies and gentlemen, Biola Kazim. Jimmy, oh, great to be here. Good to have you back in the studio. I know, right? Yeah. yeah sitting was, pretty at the top, right? Yeah, it's lonely. It's um, lonely. I mean, as you can see right here, I'm <laughs> the only one on the couch. I don't know. Lonely at the top. Hopefully, you'll be there for too long, right? Oh, wow. 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 You are very, your intentions are quite clear. Nah, because really? I don't want you to be lonely, you know? No, I want to be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be lonely. But one person I do know that is not going to be lonely in studio today um, is going to feel the heat. He has um, made statements regarding my team jersey he has um told me to enjoy it while it lasts i hope you enjoy his uh, position as a guest on the show while it lasts because um, i might not have him back again you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the legend the man the myth himself jay your love what's up big bro thank you very much guys for having me <laughs> good, to, good to be here um jimmy we have a lot to talk about this but, is uh, how i am in person so we prepare yourself i'm worse <laughs> i'm worse in person it's always about the boy scout approach here you're mm. always prepared always prepared if you stay ready you never have to get ready so having said that um i have a, a very good congratulations to you for making it to the show physically um we appreciate your presence um but i have a, an idea sorry i have an idea um really do you know who is at the top of the premier league table really who's at the top just just uh, are we actually i could give you i could give you a clue are we actually doing this I, I, ladies and gentlemen if you can see the clue i'm giving let's get on with well. the show jimmy this is the show what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> say well. how does it feel you were talking a lot of smack about arsenal not being able to do what they got to do but here you are it's not always it's not always how you start is how you finish yeah Absolutely. we know that we know that we know about that from last season well, you will know about that yeah, you're yeah, running away yeah, from I'm the very studio. much aware so that's why you, i was you ran away hurry. you ran through wanda or something yeah, i also <laughs> ran away last week too. <laughs> i remember telling you sometime last season different place different setting yep with arsenal's mm -hmm. uh, I remember. Gra, gra, like we say I that's why you, as I, I have a grudge with you because no, but you don't learn you know you got it right you can't so help yourself i'm trying Ateta, to i love to beat i think he's doing something wonderful but i think you're still Thank a few you. seasons away from winning the title few seasons right. maybe like eight no no no. but i i actually feel like we're almost replicating what liverpool did in the season where they finally got over the hump because they were so close and then the season after that they were able to they get it just by one it, point yeah. i mean i think this season will be very much closer than last season i think arsenal has learned a lot from um the errors from last year as well okay. um but also man city doesn't look as dominant as they've looked in the last couple of seasons you're right on both counts clearly man city don't look as dominant but to be fair to them um their key player is out i mean yep, given the yep, and yep, yep. even without him they, they still are, have a way they of are thereabouts, which suggests, which is quite ominous, you know, um, for everyone. I also think that Ateta has compensated a lot for last season's defensive frailty. Right. Um, if you look at games, I think the game against West Ham, yep. um, the game against Southampton, those were games that Arsenal easily could have won if they were more solid at the back. Yep. And it's made those adjustments now. So Arsenal is not scoring as many as but possibly the best they defense in the league. Right Absolutely. Now. I think yeah. it's considered maybe just 10 clean sheets i yep. think about six or seven so yep. you can see that that defensive platform is solidly there and you know when you have the kind of offensive players that you have who make a difference like saka you know uh might not be the most spectacular player but his contributions are absolutely fundamental um arsenal might be in there with a chance but like Shay she said i will still tilt probably man city with a much closer race because the city we are saying is not the optimum city and so if they have a couple of guests to go and they are 
you know, not too far from everyone. Yeah. Imagine when they eventually at some point kick in together, they probably leave everyone in their wake again. All right. So having said that, um, the hot topic for me today would obviously resonate around Manchester United. Um, but the reason why I want us to, you know, touch on that is because they have a very pivotal game this week. And I, I think that's going to be, um, that's going to say a lot as to how they go forward. Uh, but before we do that, I must remind you again that you can be a part of the show uh, by joining us on X Space. Uh, you can also uh, catch this on YouTube on Monday after this uh, has been broadcasted. But my co-host, my man, the one and only, my fellow king, Ozomena, is in with us he's not here right now but virtually we have him connected to us also what's good how you feeling today no, i mean I'm, I'm doing great uh the elephant is, the elephant is back on the tree so that, that's <laughs> only 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 right only <laughs> one outcome when the elephant sits on the tree it might take some time but there's only one thing that's gonna happen the elephant's gonna come down oh Lord. <laughs> but Biola, i mean yourself you've alluded to it um um today already i think if, when you look at the way this arsenal team play I think Jimmy, as an Arsenal fan, will also attest to this. Arsenal really haven't gotten into second gear when it comes to the attacking phase really? of the game. And it's something that you know that eventually wow. is definitely... Oh, no, let's speaking. be honest, but it's something that we know that is, 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 eventually, is, is eventually going to come. The good thing Arsenal have is, I mean, they say men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Mm, Arsenal have the best defensive record in the English Premier League. You get me, and and that and, and that that counts for something. So so if you're if you're an Arsenal fan or if you're an Arsenal enthusiast, there's something to be positive about. And you look at the other teams that are going to be vying for those positions. Beyond, I know I said a couple of weeks ago that I have City as favourites and I have Liverpool behind City before I even have Arsenal. But uh, but I, I think just just look, looking at the way just City one week at the top playing. also just <laughs> one week at the top <laughs> you're about to betray yourself let's see finish now let's see finish. No, no, one, the point i'm trying to make is I, I still stick with that same stuff i still believe it's city then liverpool and then arsenal and this is not me trying to downplay anything but what i'm saying is when i look at the way city have been playing it's baffling to me because I expect more from this city side. Uh, also, um, just a second. Let me try and get some uh, opinions from our X space as we are right now. Um, we do want to get more people involved. Uh, so if you're on the X space right now, and we would love for you to be a part of this uh, space. Love yours. Uh, the the line is open to you to give me your comments as to you know Arsenal being on the top of the table at the moment. Do you think it's back to the uh, elephant on the tree branch, or is it more likely that Arsenal are very very well grounded? At the top of the table um love yours you have the floor um, what's up what's I your name what team do you support that. first of all <laughs> so for Manchester United. okay so i'm gonna keep you on the line but first of all give me your opinion on arsenal's being arsenal being at the top of the table arsenal are the best defense in the league so with no doubt they deserve to be on top of the table. who would have thought we'd be saying that league. arsenal are the best defense in the league who would have actually yeah, thought no, we'd say that at some point in time you guys are actually the best but in defense but your attack has not been it although injuries have been playing their own part injuries to Odegaard and Jesus Timber. like you guys scored five against Lens six against Lens so we'll see how it goes if you guys can score more goals then you guys will definitely win I'm asking you as an as a yeah. Manchester United fan are you are you deceived fan. by the form that they that the records show <laughs> or are you seeing the reality of who Manchester United is as a today yeah jimmy there are definitely many issues with manchester united so i feel like injuries we are we also have a lot of injured players but of we'll course. see how it goes for me you know, if we if we leave the champions league i think it's even be good for manchester united so that they can focus on the premier league and wow. the other competition because i feel like manchester united squad can compete in all the competitions they can't so okay the, the sooner we leave the champions league the better in my opinion well, uh, it's your opinion and we respect it. Thank you very much for sharing that. But let me ask Shay real quick before I go to the um, the, the one man that I know has a, a good knowledge of where Manchester United is right now. Um, Shay, do you actually think this is the Manchester United that we're talking about, that we're saying we hope they get out of Europe so that they can focus more on the Premier League? Is Love Yours wrong in his assertion? I think it's, it's right in, to, to some degree. Mm. Um, I think with, with where the club is at at the moment, that I, I like what Eric uh, Teng has said this, this week in terms of um, we're a project, we're, we're, we're work in progress, and then eventually we'll get it right, which um, the hierarchy of the football club have not come out to say, uh, disappointingly. Um, 
I think that's where that sh should be the statement, really, because everybody's st everybody still looking at Manchester United, thinking, "Well, we're the big club. We should be doing X, Y, Z." You you might know, be we, a big we club, used but to you're be. not playing like one. We used to be. Exactly. We're still big, of course, globally. Yeah, in terms, yeah. But when yeah. it comes to football right now, I don't think we're, we're anywhere yeah. where we need to be. We're paying huge amounts of money just to get big players to come and. Can I pause you there? You're saying please. a lot of we, we, we. Are you a Man U fan? Really, Jimmy? Wow, <laughs> Jimmy. Every smart rich guy you know he are United every fans. Smart, rich guy. <laughs> are United fans. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you're smart, but the rich side. Of my <laughs> but carry on, carry on. I, yeah, I didn't quite so, realize. My bad. So there needs to be a big statement from from the from the hierarchy of the football club to then come out and say, well, we we've had one man who's done a lot of wonders for for the football club over the mm. years, but we where we are at the moment is about building. It's about um. Uh, trying to find new ways. What's working 20 years ago is not working right working now. Right How now. can we be Manchester United again to, to then grow? Now, in terms of leaving the Champions League, I, I get the logic to it from a football angle, but financially, it makes no sense. It's just stupidity. So, <laughs> uh, that's why I said I get what you're saying, but yeah. again... I, you I, have to take out the emotions and focus it. on yeah. Yeah. You know, even from a football perspective, the reality of the matter is that I don't think the team has shown that they cannot cope with Manchester with right. uh, Manche Champions League challenge. In critical games, the team has been ahead... And because of individual errors, now they are behind. Um, even at Bayern, the team scored three goals. I mean, how do you score three goals away at Bayern? It's staying three, in the game. Three away at Galatasaray, yeah. three away at um, Copenhagen, and you didn't win any of these games, <laughs> right? Two nil up against um, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, didn't manage the game. Two nil up against Gal a very difficult place to go, to go ahead, manage to go two nil up in the first 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just see how the game, the team couldn't. So I think that, like Shea and you know, our friend said, because of where United are now in the Champions League, it's convenient to say, oh, the team cannot cope with the challenge. But we've seen that they could be competitive. But because of one, I think, in-game management by the manager, and the team has not been able to eliminate individual Do you think dropping to Europa League would be better than no, elimination completely? Obviously, no, because in Europa League, you play every Thursday. Mm. And that's a big More problem. Yeah. In the sense that you now play most of your league games on Sunday. Two, 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 two points. One, most of your rivals will have played on Saturday. And, then you, and the so you're constantly you. playing catch-up. And you don't... They're already ahead of you. All you have to do is falter maybe twice and then and it's over. you know they are gone. So yeah. big teams don't do well in managing Europa League and league, you right. know, um, league aspirations. Because if you're a big team, everybody expects you to challenge for the title. I don't remember any big team that simultaneously challenged or played well in the league and maintained a deep run in the Euro not the Champions League, in Europa, the Europa League. Yeah. Because the logistics of Europa and just, just all crazy. of it, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, yeah. And once you get into the quarterfinals, you are not expected to win it, Absolutely. right? You are not, so you start using your first team exactly. in the quarterfinals. You're and so they play on, on Thursday, yeah. they play again on Sunday, and they play on... Th so you go so back to the Champions League uh, I don't, I, I don't think so. So I think United, from a football perspective, are decent enough to challenge in Champions League. They are just where we they are right now because of individual errors and also because the team is a psychologically fragile side. It's a mm. feature of psychological fragility for you to score three goals away at Bayern, three, to be 2 nil up yeah. at Copenhagen and Galatasaray and get nothing from those games. Um, I'm going to go into our X space now and get some opinions from some of our listeners that are on there right now. Uh, we do want to hear your opinion on Manchester United's form. Um, Nigerian Scouser, your hand is up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so, yeah, after recent developments, I've said letting go some of my hits for some clubs, personally. Uh, what, can you tell me one of those recent developments? <laughs> <laughs> what could change your mind so quickly? The current situation in the Champions League is, is just pitiful. I, I can't really hit on them at this point. Wow, it's, don't kick a man when it's down, huh? Yeah, that's that's just wrong. I just if you watch them really, you know that they are like one bad result away from another run of bad games. We okay, so because I have you on here now and I know that you're a diehard Liverpool fan, I'm gonna now ask you about your team Liverpool. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Are you satisfied with what you're seeing from your Liverpool side or are they flattering to deceive? I would say I'm satisfied so far. Based off of last last season was just terrible for me. So this is better than I could have expected. What what, what is what is the reason for this upturn in form? Do you know? I just think fresher legs. I, I don't even think the midfield has clicked as people say it has. I just mm. think the legs are fresher and that just gives energy to the team. All right. All the best to you and your team. Uh hopefully you won't be walking alone tomorrow. All right, Shay, let me come to you now. Um Liverpool though, are they the real deal or are they just doing better than they did last season? They are the real deal. Really? Yeah, they are the For real the deal. For the title? I'll tell you what, Jurgen Klopp will be the happiest manager in the Premier League. 
There's not a lot of talk around Liverpool. They would love that. Nobody's talk talking the about pressure. them at all. Another team we're not talking about, I mean, I'm not going to overflow that, is Aston Villa. Oh, we're yeah. going to go there. Don't it's worry about it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a fa- Aston Villa fan. Well, I didn't say that in public. But, but, no. but, but even for Liverpool, I mean, the, 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 the last caller said something. With the, the guys that have come in, their fresher legs and whatever, you watch the space, they'll be even be better next season. The Macalista, the Slobo Slide, yeah. they will come alive. Those that haven't actually so, lit, up, lit it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in terms of that, you see a, a Darwin Nunez. Um, he's still fluffing his lines, but he's performing way better than he was last season. Yes. Um, the issues surrounding uh, 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 Diaz, Luis Diaz, uh, that's I settled up, now. Yeah. He's, he's, I believe, more focused on, on football matters right now. You see a Trent Alexander-Arnold that is playing... Um, very well, not just for Liverpool, but for England as well, becoming a very pivotal player yeah. uh, for them in that midfield. So we'll Sly, we can't even, we can't say enough about that guy. But there's a certain Mo Salah as well that is on the verge of uh, breaking another record at Liverpool. I think uh, it's 150 goals, uh, two goals to 200, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Um, talk to me about Liverpool and how much of a threat they carry this season. I mean, they carry some threat. Um, they have a very solid goalkeeper. They have a solid back line now. And Salah is fully back in form. Um, even last season, when they struggled badly, towards the tail end of the season, I think they put a run of five or six wins together. Yeah. So you always get a sense that there is a lot of quality in this side. Mm. I think that Klopp just, in some sense, lost sight of the midfield and how quickly the guys there degraded. I mean, you know, Fabinho, um, they had a lot of hope in um, Alcantara, Henderson. They just didn't have a midfield. Uh, somehow they hung in there. I think they finished fifth or you know, right. sixth. But this is they've addressed that. Like Shea said, you look at Sobos Lai, Macalista, playing really well, but you get a sense that there's more to come. Um, and up front, um, more than any side, they spread not just their goals, but their attacking threat around. Right. Diogo Jota, extremely dangerous. Ooh. You know, they have dangerous players up front who Very. create situations, who score goals. Jota, dangerous, like I said. Luis Diaz, the issue. extremely dangerous. Even Darwin Nunes, even when he's not scoring, is a proper bother. If he's on the pitch, centre-backs know that they have, have to their hands him. full. So they have that, you know, like I said, um, democratization of danger mm. in some sense that a lot of teams... I like that word, democratization <laughs> of danger. Like, Everybody's dangerous. Like you just <laughs> know that you cannot rest with all of these guys, you know, on the pitch. So yes, um, they are the real deal. In, like I said to a lot of people, Klopp is quite unfortunate that he has had to come up you know, against this Guardiola's Manchester City. I know, right? This Liverpool team believe that they can win the title. Liverpool are extremely relentless. And particularly when they need a goal, they are going to come at you and create a situation and get a goal. How many teams are actually in the title race right now? I think teams in the title race will be Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal. Um, Villa doing well, but um, I don't think they have this squad that can um, maintain the challenge for too long. Um, I also think that their away form is quite troubling. Um, at home, they blow everybody apart, including the big teams. You know, yeah. I think they score literally three or four goals in every home game. They are extremely yeah. comfortable at home. Yeah. Uh, but away, that's when you know the quality of players, technically, also psychologically, you know, start to show up. So I don't think they have enough in them to put a run together. Chelsea are married in tenth. Everyone thought that without the encumbrance of Europe this year, they will be yeah. doing a lot better. But, but that hasn't seems happened. To be worse. Struggling badly. Actually, Chelsea's mm-hmm. problems actually is home form, which is quite yeah. surprising. Which they don't Manchester have United, two yo-yo, you know, to put a run together. So I think um, in terms of the race for the title, it's a top will be three? Liverpool, City, Arsenal. And I think that the side that can manage their injuries best probably will be the one you know, that, absolutely. I think that if you have key players out for extended periods, the other two guys are going to eat you up. So is a three, three, um, three team title race, or just four or two? Great analysis by Kazim, by the way. Yeah, that was Thank that's you. exactly how, how I would say. Um, us not top at the moment. I think Great the biggest, sport. the biggest win, Ateta will have loved more than anything that got you in this position <clears> is the Brentford one. Mm. That was meant to be absolutely. The, that was a game he had to win. And the manner with which Brentford defended the Absolutely. numbers they had to, to then fight come out to of that. Win it. And to still manage to get three Th- points. That from game the, wasn't um, just about three points, about mm, the mental strength absolutely. of the player, about the belief that is that keep we doing what we're do doing. Yeah. So that win is more than just three points. Now, going forward, if Arsenal, given the retinue of games they've got to play, the teams they're going to be, they'll play Liverpool, they'll play Villa, will be a big test next, next, next week. If they can manage to be top this time next month, yeah. They have a chance. Okay, if they can manage to be top this time next month, but they, that's not firmly in the title race. I don't think any honest person. There's no, there's no disputing that. There's a cold bloodedness about them this season that wasn't there last season. Like you said, and that game against Brentford Rice is a major part of that. And, and if you, I don't also, Absolutely. I think that the coaching as well, the mentality. When Arsenal don't have the ball, there's a way they fight to get it back 
that was in there reminds me of peak Barcelona, reminds right, me of City, right, right. which and I mean she, she will probably tell us how players play when they are without the ball. It's probably it a better indication indication of their mindset than big, when they have with the ball. It's fairly big teams. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. If they are hungry for it. That's not family in the title race. Family I, in the title I, I agree race. with both of you. I think it's actually a three horse race. Um you've gave you've given strong points as to why Liverpool should not be slept on. Um, clearly from Arsenal's last season performance and the fact that they're top of the table now, have the best defence in the league, you have to acknowledge them as one of the title contenders. Right. Absolutely. And then Manchester City, the inevitable, um, they're always going to be there. They're, in fact, they're waiting for all of you, let's put it that way. Um, so with an outside chance, if there was one team you would give an outside chance, who would it be? Shay? Villa. Hmm. Let's talk about Villa then. <laughs> <laughs> we should oh, talk no, about Villa. Let's, let's actually talk about them. So why are, why are Villa your option as a dark horse? Well, I've been brightening at the start of the season, but with the again, Europe comes into it. If you're it's not, not easy, if, as bro. a team, if, <laughs> it wouldn't matter what level of players you've got. If you if they haven't got the experience to sort of play in Europe and then combine that with the league, it becomes very very difficult for a team which they are suffering from at the moment. They will get over that. Villa is doing the same thing as well. Of course, they're playing in Europe, but they are. For some for some funny reason they are managing it a little bit better than a lot of other teams that, that I think the difference is probably space. the manager. You know, Mary owns that league, those yeah. leagues, Europa yes. Conference type yeah. league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mary, I think he's benefiting from the fact that he was at Arsenal as a rookie. Yeah. He learned a lot in the process. Now about back with an opportunity. Yeah. Now he knows this, this is what and he's, he's bringing is the about. mentality of a big Absolutely. team to Absolutely. an Aston Villa side that has uh, the resemblance of a structure of a big team. Mm. The resemblance, I say. Remember they're not too long ago they were relegated they're coming back from relegation they're now one of the more stable teams in the premier league um so i do see them as a big team but maybe not in terms of achievements in the last 20 10 to oh, 20 yeah. years yeah. um who's your dark horse aston villa still i mean best of the rest Probably Tottenham ahead of Aston Villa, uh, but we'll Tottenham they've quietly gone out of, of yeah, record. But, 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 but the reason is quite obvious, right? That was what I was going to say. Best of the rest, Tottenham probably will be leading. Just be shading it ahead, you know, of Aston Villa for me in terms of how they quickly transitioned from an Harry Kane led side to what they are now. Everyone thought that without Harry Kane they were going to struggle badly. They transitioned brilliantly. They've shared their goals, uh, but we've seen the reason why they've fallen. Maybe not fallen apart because they've led in each of those games that they have gone to lose. Right? Um, they've had injuries to Mickey, who is key for them at the back. James Madison probably their best, you know, offensive outlet. Um, Ben Binsuma has missed a couple of games. Yep. You know, um, Christian Romero. So. They are not. They don't have the kind of deep squad that you know Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City have. A couple of key injuries, you know, they get affected, you know, quite badly. Yeah. I, I'll probably just put them ahead of Aston Villa. Um, I think that where Aston, Aston Villa might share them a little bit is that I think that their coach, um, Ange, is a bit too much of an ideologue. Is a mm. bit too much philosophical in his approach to football. Right. Unai Emery has a wiliness. He believes in phil football philosophies, but so for instance, Ange will tell you that even if he's down to five men, he will attack. I no think that a more yeah. sensible approach is what Unai would do, is to analyze the strengths of who you are playing What's against possible? and create your team to nullify you know, those strengths. I, I think that managers who are a bit too wielded to philosophies and don't have access to the, the the managers who are completely wielded to philosophies typically have access to the best players mm. and that means that sometimes when the philosophy fails the quality of the players will tell Absolutely. but when you are wielded to a philosophy in the way that Ange is wielded to and you you know say that results don't matter as much as how you play i think that managers like Unai Emery, there's a reason why he has won as many trophies right. you know with smaller side with malaga right. you know with valence with sevilla Very it's because he will look, absolutely he's going to look at your team he will keep his own strengths, but you address your own first. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I just think that that Wiley approach probably why I think she is even putting them ahead of, uh, ahead of Tottenham. Okay. So none of you mentioned uh, Newcastle, but for, for <laughs> clear reasons, we're going to leave that where it is. There are midweek games this this coming week. Um, there's, there are games on Tuesday, there are True. games on uh, Wednesday. Uh, just list you through the games that we played this week. During the week, uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers will be taking on Burnley. Um, Luton Town will be taking on Arsenal. And then on Wednesday, I don't know why I say Arsenal like Pujana, Arsenal. Um, Brighton will be taking on Brentford, which is, wow, the bees. Um, Crystal Palace will be doing battle with That's Bournemouth. That's an interesting game. Very Brighton, interesting Brighton, game. Brighton, Brentford. It's actually one of the games I want to see, although I'll be watching... Um, uh, 
Actually, that's the game I will be seeing because other games are being played at that time. Crystal mm. Palace taking on Bournemouth, nothing mm. to look in there. Uh, Fulham taking on Nottingham Forest, nothing, nothing to watch there. Nottingham. Sheffield United against Liverpool. If I want to see goals, I'll watch that. Uh, <laughs> 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 if I want to now, nah, oh no, but the game of the week would definitely be Aston Villa taking on Man City at Villa, Villa Park. Park. <laughs> nah. That's, the, game of the, that's the key part because there's a comfort for Aston Villa at home. Uh, Man City haven't really done too great away from home. They're not mm. necessarily blowing everybody out away from home. And then, of course, the biggest one, Chelsea taking on Manchester United. Okay, back in the day, it would have been the biggest one, right? Manchester United versus Chelsea. But right now, it's just a side note. Oh, also playing. On paper, technically still is <laughs> against. <laughs> also playing because I don't even know what we're going to see in that particular game. Who's going to show up? Who's going to show out? Will it be the game Chelsea will say, wow, we actually have a Mikhailo Mudric that knows how to score? I don't know if that will be the game. But yeah, of all these games, let's talk about Manchester City taking on Aston Villa. We've mentioned a lot about Villa's home form um, and how much Una Emery's inf- imputes into that team has really led them to being a top four contender. Now they're facing one of their toughest um, challenges this season in Manchester City. How do you see that game playing? It's a tough one. It's a tough call. I think um, whatever happens that day uh, should start from what happens this this weekend. And it will also show you where Aston Villa are. Absolutely. Will it, will it though? Would that be fair to analyze Aston Villa? If they manage, if they manage to play the same way they play at home, stay consistent, have the same level of um, efficiency mm. at home against the Man City side, and they end up winning that game. God, you know, just for the sake so of you permutations. Know, you can't rule it out. It's possible. Just for the sake Not of permutations, possible. they end up winning that game. Maybe two one, or you know, they blow they blow City out two nil. What whatever. What does that then say about Aston Villa? I don't think it says anything more than what we already know. Okay. That they are a very well coached side and they are extremely dangerous at home. I think does that, that put them in the title race? I'm not, I'm not sure they want to get in there straight away. Exactly. Them <laughs> I mean, they don't there. want to, but... Una Emery will be very, very comfortable with, with where he's at the moment, given right. the number of games that have been played. Mm. If he gets to the top of the league, match time, oh yes. Yeah. Now it's about momentum, it's about the force, about injuries and the non, a number oh, of things that things. you can begin to look into. Yes, he will not want to lose the game, but I don't think he wants to be top right now because all of a sudden, all the attention shifts to the to him and then the players. Yeah. Are they ready for that? Yeah, I, I also think that from a managerial perspective, sometimes you can become a victim of your own success. Right. I think that right now, he's already overachieving with Villa. If he gets them into a title race, next season, that becomes the expectation again of the sides. And so if you come down to like a fifth of six, which is truly your level, yeah. fans can start to be disappointed. And So I think that she is right in the sense that I don't think they even want a title race. I think that they are doing well where they are and they probably would think that if we stay here till the end of the season to love in it, because it will be in the Champions League, right? Okay. It will be course. a phenomenal achievement by Una yeah. Emery. Absolutely phenomenal phenomenal. achievements it would be, but definitely. For, but for Man City, yeah. sorry, Jimmy, before you move on, for Man City, it, it would be a normal game. For Villa, it would be a big game. And that, for me, is, is the difference. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> every game Man City plays is a normal game because yeah. they always know, just like the Los Angeles Lakers, whoever you're playing, they rise up, they step up their levels when they play against you. So you're not going to get the same Sheffield United that Brentford will get when they face Sheffield United. Mm. You're going to get the Champions League version of Sheffield United. So they can expect whatever Aston Villa has done prior to playing Man City, they're going to up their levels. So I think for every game Man City plays, they're always ready for the best version of their opponent. I think that the game will be really, really close. I see Villa... It's going to be entertaining. I I I see Villa putting up a real fight. And it's the kind of game where City have to score early, right? The deeper this game goes without a City goal, the more likely... I think City also have to do a job for the Premier League and put the the mediocre teams in their place. (laughs) Get what I'm saying? Why? No, because if Man City are not able to sit Aston Villa down and put them in their place, they're going to be a much tougher task for every other team that they face because they, they're they going to gain confidence Absolutely. from playing the Man City and, and coming out in flying colours. But it's good for the fans, right? Who's Which fans? <laughs> <laughs> which the competitive fans? league is good for the neutral <laughs> fans? I don't want that. <laughs> Jimmy, I, I want you are saying to stroll exactly. through the league. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ever lose a game. Jimmy makes predictions, <laughs> analyzes views everything from an Arsenal I first to bring exactly. Hello, I went exactly. outside this today. <laughs> Just be clear. <laughs> Final word from the guys in studio. Shay, what's standing out for you this week? Um, Life of football? I mean, football. Whatever. And then you can give me a bit of life as well. I look forward to the Villa 
Man City game. I think Villa he, Man City. Yeah, I'm sure we'll learn one or two things from that game. Um, Luton Arsenal. <laughs> Lisa Luton Arsenal. <laughs> Why? Why are you affecting? You only need to ask from Klopp. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and it's what pack. And uh, as God will have it, the manager of Luton is a very good friend of mine. Oh, wow, so you're going to put in a call? Together. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be on the phone as soon as I leave here now. Don't worry about that. <laughs> He's got a job to do for me. <laughs> wow, so it's great to have you in the studio. But Thank I must so ask much. you, um, while you're in Nigeria, what are you getting up to? Um, well, I'm here uh, in so many different capacity. In different capacity. Um, of course, the first one being my football club, Imperial Football Club mm. in Ogun State. Um, ah, Udo precisely. We need to go and visit. Oh. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we please, should. We should. please, please come and visit us. It's be very, very good. Uh, away from that, meeting people, kind of economic people, right. sports administration, into it, right. net networking and consulting. Seeing how we can absolutely seeing how we can sort of um, develop our football mm. either through the government or through the private sector. We can all be in the abroad and be hoping things will get better. We need to come back home and make sure we there's so much we've learned. So yeah, I have you here. Practice. So let me ask you this: uh, the Super Eagles, as you know, they've not been, they've they've not been super. I don't yeah. think they've been super for a while. They've not been a team that we've loved to watch as Nigerians, yeah. and I don't even think non-Nigerians would enjoy watching what the Super Eagles put out as product. Um, what do you see as one of the major issues for the Super Eagles, and what's our chances? Of making it to the World Cup, considering how we started the qualification process. Uh, before I answer that question, I need to sort of um, beg people in the house: How long have we got here? <laughs> <laughs> We're rounding up. <laughs> if it's a roundup. I'm not sure we can do justice to the question. Because, um, so summarize for us then. I, I just need your opinion because I mean, oh yeah, it's yeah, best it's to hear from yeah. you uh, at this moment. It's shameful to see how wasteful we are as a nation. I think right. football gives you what a lot of other sectors don't give you. Football gives you that. In terms of the unity, the, the business side of things, the commercial elements you stand right. to gain as a nation and even for individual and private s clubs. And I think we're missing a trick with that. I mean, by the grace of God, I live in England today. I know what those guys are doing in terms of <laughs> have churning out meetings after meetings with what's working, how can it get better? We, have not even, we are not even having the conversation. And what's not even working. So, how do we, we even exactly. about getting better? Yeah, but again, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. Yes. Right. Let's, at least let's start talking about this thing. Let's come up together and then find a solution. It's not Shayla of Jana FC, it's Nigeria. Facts. The key stakeholders need to come together and then sit down and then not just talk. I'm sick and tired of talking. Let's start doing something. Whatever, even, just, even if you do nonsense, just start something. <laughs> at least you know you're doing nothing. Yeah, you're doing nothing. You, you uh, and and, that, and right? it's shameful. Again, Where's the structure? Where's the philosophy? Um, I was recently with the with the sporting director of Germany who told me they won the World Cup. It was a ten year plan to win the World Cup. France will tell you the same thing as well. Plan, plan, plan. Structure is where we lack. Back in the day, we had the JJs who solved all the problems for for us, and we thought we were doing something wonderfully well. But now we haven't got the JJ. We don't have the talent. We've got to good hide players. Our, our mm. errors. But again, when you look at the team, what do you see? The first part of it is the culture, is the identity. When win, lose, draw. What na national team do I want to see? Where is the graduation from the under 13 to the under 15? Under Zero. So Zero. many players, we keep trying out these players. Why should uh, our coaches be scout and recruitment guys to go and recruit players to play on the under 15, under 17? I don't know why. Where's the scouting department that stems is from one? the philosophy and the methodology of the that comes into player team. profile of what you look for in a Nigerian player? And then the purpose. Because I feel sorry for all those guys that are Nigerians but don't. Actually, we're not born in Nigeria. Of Nigerian yeah, descent. Yeah, it's not yeah. their fault. They've got the right to play for Nigeria. Yes. But what help are we giving them? True. I don't look much for it. As an example, he's Nigerian by name, but he was Is born he in really England. Nigerian? And we are, we, it's unfortunate for the poor boy, but needs to be an orientation of this is what it means. I, I grew up watching the Super Eagles, and when I graduated, when I made that jump, I know what the struggle of 200 million people means. To and do you that. know, how, know how important how every time you put that jersey on, Absolutely. what are people are expecting. So it goes him. way beyond 4 3 3. It's a cultural level to it there's a cultural there's a purpose to it there's administrative skills that people need to have uh, it's a lot it's a lot i can go on he did he did he did warn us that um if we had time <laughs> we would do two episodes on the super <laughs> I, uh thank you so much i appreciate you 100 percent uh privilege to have you as a friend and not just even uh as a guest on the show and i must say whenever we do call you you're always more than willing we we thank okay. you immensely um i'm sure everybody at budweiser is happy to have you you're one of our best if not our favorites on the show this season and many more seasons yeah. thank you so much for joining us thank Appreciate you guys you. thank you it's been a pleasure uh 
My antagonist for life. I'm your friend, actually. Jimmy. You're my friend. I'm your G. You're my G. Yes, it's the T. Final word, my brother. Well, always great to be on the show. Um, like you said, even better that we finally got Shay into the studio. It's been a long time coming. But long time, man. It made our time for us. Today. We are really, <laughs> Appreciate really grateful. It. We've had a really, really great show. Looking forward to next week. And like you said, many more um, episodes. Of course. Uh, for all of you watching at home, uh, for all of you listening on X Space, we thank you all so much for always being dedicated and, of course, loyal fans, making sure you're here with us and, of course, participating to the best of your abilities. For all of you that are, of course, participating in any of our questions, the kickoff question, the predictor platform, our predict and win, we like to reward and keep rewarding. Remember, at some point in time, we will be doing our giveaway again where you ask us questions and we give you free beer. Having said that, it's the Kings of Football show brought to you by the King of Beers, Budweiser. Peace, love, and respect.